My name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is Real True Wait. Street Crime. Let me say this to you all <clears throat> about the young boys. As you know, Wonderful Wayne got killed by Butch. As you know, <clears throat> Raymond Peoples got killed by Butch. As you know, Block ran out the world because of Butch. Bone Man died in his sleep. And Chucky Holloway got killed as well. All of them got killed. All the founders of the young boys. Butch wound up when he got out of jail. He couldn't have no more success. He couldn't make money anymore. He was washed up. He was washed up before he went to jail. Understand this. That young boy Rain you all hear about was two years. All of that shit you hear me talking about, all of it, two years is how long Butch had. All that bullshit he was with on the streets he had for two years. Understand this, when the fat man got out of jail, he was hearing about him how he had killed W.W. from Donna Jean. We go down to Greek Town and we run into his lawyer, Cole Pepper. Cold Pepper telling the fat man, Butch Jones was my man, man. Butch is my man. And Pops looked at Cold Pepper. We was riding a brand new red vet. Everybody in the city screaming about it. Understand this. Cold Pepper told the fat man, Butch Jones was his man. Fat man said, you know he's a rat, don't you? A snitch. Obviously, as a lawyer, you wouldn't know that. Cold Pepper was his fixer. Understand that. They gained a whole lot of fame from Cold Pepper. Cold Pepper got famous, and he was never, he could never fight a case. You ain't never heard Cold Pepper on the news fighting a case and getting a decision from a jury. What you hear is Cold Pepper represented a nigga, either one of two things, bought the case or pleaded him out. Cold Pepper was nothing but a fixer lawyer, he was not a fighter is what the fat man said about him. Understand what he said, he was a fixer. If you need a case fixed, Eddie, he might be able to fix it for you. But if you need a fighter, he ain't the man for the job. He's a fixer man. Understand what Cold Pepper was, fixing and buying cases for Butch with the young boys, which gained them even more fame. We went down to Milwaukee Jack's shoe shop after that. Milwaukee Jack, I'm talking about Butch Jones, because him and Treacherous had been serving. Now, we wind up going to Treacherous after we didn't heard all this. Treacherous talking about him. Come by the house, Treacherous talking about him. He had been serving. So now we had the bag in from Thailand. He needed a work. I went to Tracy because Tracy had been moving the shit I was getting from Treacherous. Tracy took Pep. That's how it all came about. Now after he heard that, Pep told him about how Butch did him. So now the fat man done got a picture of Butch and know he'll snitch when he walk out the door because he done read his file where he snitched on Sylvester Seal Murray. So number one, if Butch Jones had been on the street at that time, the fat man would have killed him. No doubt about it. I can guarantee y'all that he would have disappeared, that motherfucker. I know that. In the final strike on Butch Jones, he was fucking Betty Boo, one of Pops' old woman. Boy, that he had Pops hot as fire. Now, to seal his goddamn faith, he gonna have Spencer them kidnap me and charge the fat man a ransom or either kill me. Understand what really sealed his faith. He is in jail now. Pops that learned all this shit won't this motherfucker's ass. So Pops go back to jail and Maurice Bell is there telling him about what they gonna do to Pat when he come in there. He look at Maurice Bell and tell him, you got that all backwards, my brother. You got that totally flipped backwards. When your uncle get in here, I'm sticking his ass, and if you want to help him, I'm sticking you too. That's what he told Maurice Bell. Ask him. Maurice Bell tried to put up a little fake front. How are we going to do? 
I'm fucking over your uncle and you too. Understand if he come in here, you ain't gonna put your hands on Pep because you ain't gonna have hands to put him on because we gonna stick your ass. You ain't gonna be able to get on, put your hands on Pep because we finna fuck you up. And he just kept talking that shit to Pops. Pops was on the verge of fucking Maurice Bell up in Myron. But he wanted to wait for Butch Jones because he wanted him worse. At least Maurice Bell had heart to come to jail. Butch Jones didn't. Eddie Jackson had a target off it on Butch Jones' head on the streets or in jail. Understand this. When he got out of jail, now I'm marketing. I got Rodney Rice and them on him. I tell Rodney Rice, because I sent a nigga up to the car wash there on Elmhurst or whatever street, just wherever the goddamn car wash on Dexter was. It might have been on Elmhurst, but it was a car wash on Dexter. Easily to find. When he got out of jail, he was selling out of. So I sent my man William Harmon up there, and William bought a blow from the car wash, from the niggas who was running this dope. Butch is inside of the car wash sitting down. Okay? I done sent William in there to surveillance this nigga. Bought a blow. His blow was basically cut. It wasn't even dope. It was nothing but cut. He up there on motherfucking selling cut when he get out of jail, talking what the fuck he gonna do to me. Now, I didn't put Rodney Rice them on it. And when I tell Rodney Rice, he said, man, who you want me to do? I said, I want Butch Jones. He looked at me, he said, who Butch Jones? Nigga, that's 100000 but I'll take care of him for you. I said, nigga, bet it up. I got it. And Rodney Rice knew I had it. So now we putting together the plan to get Butch's ass at the car wash selling totally cut. He winds up kidnapping one of Otis Riley's boys who was getting money with us and cut his head off trying to get $250,000 from his family and then he ran his ass down to Pennsylvania. When he did all of that, I had rice them on his ass. If he had a laid around really any longer, he had a real motherfucker surprise coming from me. And it's that nigga you wanted to kidnap, the one you told Spencer to kidnap, nigga, Eddie Jackson Jr., the one you ran from, the one Maurice Bell told you, your own motherfucking nephew, nigga, you just stepped on Mr. Gilmore's property, and wherever we catch your ass at, nigga, we leaving you. If we catch you in the shower, we leaving your bitch ass in there on the ground stuck. If we catch your ass at that car wash, Rodney Rice and Lamont is arresting you, bringing you out to me. And I'm going to introduce you to Remy Martin Bottles, Pit Bulls, all the shit you used to do to the little boys. I was going to introduce it to you. I was dying to get my hands on that motherfucker to show him who he was really fucking with. But he had already found that out because Maurice Bell let him know. Nigga, you don't want to come in contact with Eddie Jackson because it ain't going to be pretty, nigga. He got out barking all them niggas waiting to stick you. Understand why the nigga was already a snitch and didn't come into mind because he had already snitched on Sylvester Steele Murray, which bought his ticket out of mind. Now they just skirted his ass off because Maurice Bell and told him he better not come into mind because his ass is grass. This big badass killer man, Butch Jones, then fucked up and stepped on Mr. Gilmore's grass. Understand that. What Mr. Butch Jones had did, and he knew he had did, and he ran because he knew on the streets I was finna take care of his ass since the fat man was locked up. I was finna deliver him oppressive from the Jacksons. Special delivery, Rodney Rice. In Lamont Upshaw. Right at that car wash, nigga, they're gonna catch one of them niggas in there, tell them that they told them that you doing it, and they're gonna take you to jail and bring your ass right where I want you. And bring you right in that famous basement you used to beat motherfuckers and sick dogs on. I had a surprise for Mr. Butch Jones. Really, I did. I had the 5th Precinct Police Department just for you. Yes, I did. And he kidnapped a nigga because he couldn't make no money. His dope was cut. 
I sent my man in there to get a blow. That shit was cut. Since he thought he was so slick, gonna have Spencer kidnap me, I'ma have the police kidnap him. I'ma show the nigga who really slick. Since the punk thought he was so slick in that fucking little boys right now in the penitentiary, Reverend. That's why I call him a punk, cause he in there fucking little boys right now in the penitentiary, Reverend. He got AIDS waiting on the Lord to call him home. Understand how Butch Jones end up running like a bitch, snitching like a bitch, and all these niggas running around the street talking about a Butch Jones. That's why when Butch's son, Peasy, said Butch Jones to me, I exploded. Like, Nigga, who the fuck you? Man, Peas, hey, he didn't, Peas didn't know this shit. But when he gonna tell me what them niggas on Dexter, I had something for all them niggas on Dexter. Rodney Rice, Lamont Upshaw, in the fifth motherfucking precinct, complimentaries of Eddie Jackson Jr. just for you. Fucking with me and wanting to defend a snitch. Nigga, you ought to be embarrassed to even defend a snitch-ass motherfucker. In my father's day, everybody would be stumping on that nigga. But the streets done turned into snitch fest. So he can walk around as a motherfucking snitch. He can go and stay his faggot ass in jail with AIDS and die. For all them goddamn murders he done committed, wrote books and told on them. Let me see the parole board let that piece of shit out. How can you justify any parole for a motherfucker like him? Subscribe, share, and like, and he makes my motherfucking blood boil to this day thinking he was some bad motherfucker. He wasn't, and I was going to let the air out of his ass. I was going to let the air out of Butchers Jones' ass. Eddie Jackson was going to stick his ass in the penitentiary, but he wouldn't come. Understand that. So yeah, that's why my blood boils. My father said to me, if it's ever a motherfucker you gonna do, he ought to be it. A motherfucker trying to kidnap you, he ought to be it. Subscribe, share, and like. What I had in store for him was what he used to do. Let him get a taste of his own motherfucking medicine. Let them pit bulls taste his blood. Subscribe, share, and like Eddie Jackson Jr. just for you. Real, true street crimes. This is the shit you ain't going to get in the newspaper on the street. Nowhere else but right here on Real, True Street Crime. YouTube, Red Dot Red Shoes, baby. That's the only place you're going to get this at. And as I said to y'all, the best friends was the killingest motherfuckers I ever met. And if they had been turned loose, I'd like to see the battle. Because them motherfuckers wasn't playing. And if you standing on the corner selling dope, I wouldn't advise that with the best friends after your ass. Be in a house or somewhere. Because all that running on the corner selling dope, wouldn't be nobody doing that with the best friends on them. You'd have had a whole bunch of dead motherfuckers on the corner trying to sell dope, beefing with them. Because they didn't play like that. You ain't going to stand on no corner and sell no dope with them. I can promise you that. Subscribe, share, and like. This is Eddie Jackson Jr. Telling you how it is, was, and going to be. Real, true, street crime. Subscribe, share, just for you. Telling you how the big rat and all the rest wound up. Subscribe, share, and like. Simmons Law. Check her out. She will help you out. Wheels, deeds, Anything corporate like that. Jelani's Taste and Table, 420 style or regular style, world class chef. Top tier cuts, 313 Super King for the weekend. Coney Island Chronicles is Coney Island Tony. Big Boss Film, Courtney Brown Jr. Motown Mafia Podcast, just for you, Courtney Brown Jr. too. Subscribe, share, and like. I am Eddie Baby on Instagram. Why lie when the real true street crime will do? Why lie when the real true street crime will do? Subscribe, share, and like. And it was wonderful having 
six police at your beck and call to do what you like. Understand that it was wonderful to have six police officers at your beck and call to do what you like. Subscribe, share, and like. This is Eddie Jackson Jr., Real True Street Crime. Why lie when the real true street crime will do? Motivate, don't hate. Motivate, don't hate. And if it help you, meditate, don't hate. Subscribe, share, and like. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It really don't matter. But I prefer thumbs up. But I can handle the thumbs down too. Thank you for that. Subscribe, share, and like. And as I said, go on over there and check out Class and Mac Cow. Loud delivery. Them brothers is awful loud. Out of the Highland Park, Michigan, HP Bay. Putting it down. Loud delivery. Straight out of Highland Park, Michigan. And we definitely got to tell you to check out Crime Town. Kingpin's Kids on Spotify. And here, Special Agent, FBI Officer, Ryan Giovanni, put it down. Subscribe, share, and like. And I am Eddie Baby. This is Real True Street Crime. And thanks to all of you. And as I say in the end mother words of the fat man, I'm going to be seeing a lot of you all. <laughs> this is YouTube. Red dot red shoes. Red dot red shoes. YouTube. Red dot red